something, the life I've always wanted to do, and I hated it. And so I just, I, that morning, it was, I remember it was like, I don't know, probably like May 15th, something like that, mid, early mid-May. And I said, I just can't do this anymore. And I just, I said, I started pulling back. I said, I just want to feel good. My name is Kevin McIntosh, and this is The Closing Table, where we talk to experts about their experience in real estate all across the country. Let's go. Welcome back to the Closing Table Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin C. McIntosh. Join us on this episode. One of your favorite real estate professionals representing his market. We're speaking with Badger Beal. Welcome to the Closing Table, Badger. Kevin, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you taking time out your very busy day. So we're here to talk real estate, but before we even get into it, let's talk Badger. I want you to tell us who you are outside of real estate, please. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, for all of us, that's kind of the the nice stuff. Um, I'm, a, first of all, I'm married. I've been married for 36 and a half years, uh, two kids. Congratulations. So my wife's super important, obviously. She's my best friend. And then I have two kids, a 28-year-old son and daughter-in-law. They live down St. Joe, Benton Harbor area. They'll be there for another couple of years. And then he's rotating out with his job. And then I have a daughter that's in College Station, Texas, at Texas A&M at grad school, uh, studying inorganic okay. chemistry. And so she's there. My wife and I are kind of, in the last few years, recent e empty nesters. So we're trying to figure mm -hmm. that whole thing out. Um, mm -hmm. I started, you know, that's really what I do. My, my hobbies and passions, I'm an avid cyclist, so I mountain bike a lot. I road bike, but I really, my passion is mountain biking. And so I basically, I like to bike with my free time and uh, we have a small place over in Northwestern, lower Michigan by Frankfurt Manistee area. And so we head up there a lot as much as we can. And that's kind of who I am outside of here. Other than that, I'm pretty boring. You know, I like wine, <laughs> you know, I like <laughs> wine and bicycling. So that's about it. And, and the kids, no, obviously. Man. <laughs> so we try yeah, and, and we, and we travel a fair amount, but we're streaky. Well, we're due for a good trip. It. So. God, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, devoted father uh, uh, and husband, yeah. um, you know, uh, and you still have a life, man, and very, obviously very successful real estate agent, which is why we're here. So, you know, I, I just love to hear it. Always like to put respect on, you know, our guests who are family people and just, you know, just have a life outside of real estate in general, man. So thank you for sharing that with yep. us, being a little yep. bit vulnerable. So yeah. we like to transition into your business as a real estate agent. I want you to talk about your business, but transition into it by starting off with how slash why you started to become a real estate agent. Yeah, so I, I didn't want to become a real estate agent. You know, my degree is basically in accounting and finance. Went to a really good school down in southern Michigan and mm -hmm. got out as an investment advisor in Detroit, hated it, moved up to Midland, started back home with my mom and dad, lived in the basement, started my own little investment firm and mm -hmm. still didn't like it. And make a long story short, I found my way into property management and got licensed in real estate in 1987. I was looking around, candidly, my wife and I were struggling paying the bills, recently married, and I'm going, I need to make some money. And I looked around the office and I said, if these people can make money selling real estate, then I need, I need some cash flow. So I need to start selling real estate. So I was a reluctant salesperson. I did not want to do this. And I got mm. into it basically because I had to and uh, took off in it right away. Uh, I wasn't strapped to a desk. I was out and about, and I, I I didn't have immediate success, but I had some success, but it wasn't like this huge, epic, successful right. start. But then after, after a few years, I got some serious traction and um, started really selling it. In 1998, I tripped across a coach psychologist named Dr. Frederick Gross, and I coached with him, spent eight days a year with him for 10 or 11 years in either Chicago or Scottsdale, and, um, and I actually traveled the world a little bit with he and that, uh, that ethos. So when I started with Dr. Fred in 1998, that's when my income really started taking off. So I started going from, mm. you know, 15, 20 units a year to 
30, 40, 50, 90. And um, that's where things really took off. And so that's, I don't know if I'm getting, if I'm diverging there, but so with that. No, come on. Yeah, so in 2001, I was asked to become a partner in our firm here. We hover around 40 agents. And then in 2011, mm-hmm. I was asked and subsequently opened a company in Bay City. We have, I think right now, 16 or 17 agents in Bay City. And nice. um, and so I'm a partner here in Midland and my wife and I own the company in Bay City. And um, that's really what I, what I do right now. I mean, I still list and gotcha. sell, but very, very little and relative to what I used to do. Um, in 2016, I kind of hit the wall and been uh, backing off ever since. So, um, anyhow, that's kind of my real estate career. You know, I've listened, so I've sold, listened, sold a lot of real estate, um, done a lot of really cool things, messed up a lot of stuff. And, um, Mm -hmm. if it wasn't for my wife, I probably wouldn't be here right now. (laughs) Anyhow, it's, uh, been very fortunate to be surrounded with some good business partners and a lot of great teammates in our companies. So, yeah. Yeah. The support team, man. Yeah, the inner circle. Very, very important. Very vital to your personal and professional life. I completely understand that. Yeah, and I think I'd love to hear it too. Yeah, and that's that's right. one of the lost uh conversations in real estate that you think you can be a high producer and do it alone. And I, I shared mm-hmm. it with a lot of people in our company is you know, we're independent agents, which we are, and we're little companies inside of these companies. But it's no fun right. to do it alone because some days mm-hmm. you need somebody to talk to, to commiserate, a shoulder to cry on. And then the hardest thing to do for me, you know, always was I don't know, one of the hardest things to do is to celebrate. You know, you just had this epically huge day or week or year and you're you're all alone in a vacuum. And so it's nice to have some people to enjoy some successes with um, because the more and more real estate you sell and the higher up that ladder you go and not everybody, but I've just seen it a lot. Um, we tend and we can put ourselves on an Island and isolate ourselves and just compound yeah. our, uh, our, uh, you know, compound uh, the bad feelings we may have. And so I think a large part why I traveled with coaching for so long, for so many years, and I had, I've had lots of different real estate coaches through the years is just so I didn't feel alone. And, um, you know, you have this epic day and you can't go talk to everybody that, hey, I made X number of thousands of dollars today. Who do you say that to? You know, and, mm. and a lot of people just say they don't want to hear it or it puts them in a bad funk because they're not doing it. And you, that's not anybody's intention. But it's like, heck, man, I just want to like, wow, man, I had this epic day. And who do I share it with? Right. You know, and my wife didn't get it all the time. Right. <laughs> she just goes, oh, yeah. You, you go home and it's like, OK, you got to mow the lawn and change the diapers or whatever, you know. And yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't care. And we had that. We actually had that conversation one time. I remember I came home and it was a this was a long time ago. I had a, like a seventeen thousand dollar day or something like that. And that was a big mm. day for me. And um, I come home and my wife and I are like and we don't fight, but we we kind of go passive aggressive and and but she's just well we got this going on this going on it's like whoa 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 hold on i'm like feel like i'm getting my butt chewed out and i just had this epically big day for me in real estate that i've been busting my rear end at for a long time and can we just celebrate this for a minute (laughs) you know (laughs) and and so anyhow the point is having a team around you is um very uh, comforting on good days and bad mm-hmm. days. And mm-hmm. it's almost an oxymoron that you need them more on the good days and you might need them on the bad days. Right. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, I, man, I love that. I love the perspective that you brought to it. And I, I love I love the direction that we're leaning in right now when it comes to the whole mental state yeah. of being a real estate professional because it's a very demanding profession. <clears throat> You know, you're working on your own time for the most part. You have to pretty much eat what you kill in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like you, you you don't make any sales or you don't get out there and make any transactions happen. You're not going to get anything. And then starting off is definitely going to be rough. So having that support system, whether you can go home and get that support or go to work, actually both, 
to right. get that same support. It's very, very important, especially for the mental toll that it could take on you, man. So well, and then uh, the other that, thing, that's a whole nother perspective we need to talk about. Well, and the other thing for that is if you're an agent out there and you're you're having a good day or you're having a bad day or epic, you know, careers ebb and flow and dates and weeks and months ebb and flow. So I don't like I'm on the top of the world every day, yeah. far from the yeah. case. But then it's my responsibility to also as an agent, a teammate to support my peers and my colleagues and help them celebrate and then be a shoulder for them as well. And so be that person that I want, I'm looking for out there because I'm on both sides of that, you know, stick, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, and, and the business yeah. of real estate, I've always looked at it as kind of linear, you know, the transaction, you list a house, you take it to a closing, you know, you, you acquire the client, the buyer client, same thing, you acquire a buyer client, take that, find them a house, get them through closing. And that's kind of the linear aspect of real estate. But the hardest part of the business is the nonlinear piece of real estate. You know, I can teach a mm. junior high person, kid, the contract stuff and everything. A lot of people can just get that. But surviving the ups and downs of the career and staying motivated when you're when it's tough, that's that's mm -hmm. that's the biggest challenge of the beast. Yeah, yeah. and it's and, and it's and it's teach. it's like the inner game, right? The inner game of real estate, right. but it's really non-linear. Yep. It's like all in our heads. That's a whole fact, man. That's a whole. It's a yeah. game within the game, and and mm -hmm. you are your biggest obstacle in a lot of those cases, man. So For sure. you know, you're just really getting inside your head, your head. So that's that's another reason why that support team is is important. <clears throat> yeah. But I want to talk about um very very briefly. So we talked about um a, a few of the markets that you serve, Midland, Bay City. So let, let's just talk exact where you are really thriving successfully in your market. Just describe it for people who may have never been there and then go into a little bit of the economics, the data that you may have in regards to what the real estate looks like there. Yeah, so our primary office and where I'm at right now, I'm in Midland and uh, we have, mm -hmm. like I said, we have around 40 agents here and we are, our primary marketplace is Midland County. Now we operate outside right. of Midland County in the uh, Gladwin County, Isabella, and we, get into Bay City a little bit or Bay County. And we'll, we can go mm -hmm. obviously all over the state of Michigan, but we consider our primary market greater Midland County. And we are gotcha. the leader in Midland County. Um, we're, we're really strong there. We have a, a really big presence. And so that's Midland County. We have around 35% of the market over here. In Bay City, gotcha. we're uh, a younger company. We're just about to turn 13 years old. But we are probably doing, and I don't hold me to these. I think we're doing about 10, 12% of that market, but our average sale price okay. lead, leads the leads the companies and we're highly productive. We're probably on a per agent basis, the most productive company in Bay City. Well, I know we are. And nice. so we always look at um, average income of our agents and then also what's our per agent um, number of sides of transactions. And, and we track mm -hmm. that and because we can only do what we can do. And so our agents are doing really well and we're real proud of the office. And we have two managing partners over there that are there on a day-to-day -day basis, Jim Diedrich and Melissa Beckrow, and I'm kind of a moral support and visionary over there, so. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. It seemed like you were, you, you kind of got to that point, like you were saying <clears throat> earlier, you don't do as much of the production as you used to. You're more in that position, it seems like, of leadership kind of giving back some of the gain that you've learned throughout your experience mm -hmm. to the newer agents and things like that. So uh, even sharing some of your ups and downs when it comes to uh, like, like we just talked about the ebbs and flows, the mental state. And like you also talk about uh, dealing with ADHD. Mm -hmm. Now, to my knowledge, you gave a speech about that at the Michigan Realtors Convention, if I'm not mistaken, and you touched on a few key points. So can you talk about ADHD, how it affects you personally, how it affects you professionally also. Yeah, thanks, Kev. I'm glad we got there. We're hoping to get there. But um, yeah, so I don't know, probably about a year ago right now, I was driving on 10 between Midland and Bay City. And I, I was listening to a podcast, actually, and I'm going, people need to know about ADHD in our industry. And so I, I literally from the car right down, I called Brian Westron at uh, Michigan Realtors and went through the uh, process of becoming a breakout speaker there. So long story short, to get where I, how I got to that was in 
the summer, the early summer of 2017, I was diagnosed at the age of 50 five or six, something like that, uh, with ADHD. And that diagnosis really changed my life. Um, and so from there, um, actually what brought that about is a year prior to that in May, I just hit the wall. You know, I, I was living the life I dreamed of, you know, I was traveling, I was doing well financially, the companies were doing well, I was still selling at a pretty high volume then. And, um, you know, my son was studying in London. Make a long story short, I'm like, I just hit the wall. Um, it was mid-May in my basement. I go down there every morning and I meditate and study a little bit. And I remember thinking, I put my hand in my, or my head in my hands and I just start crying. I'm going, I can't do this anymore. I had so many things going on, um, you know, from being a father, you know, kids, in and out of college right in that window um i was in europe twice that spring i was in mm -hmm. florida for a week i was in virginia beach for a week I, I mean i was just doing all this really super cool stuff i was in toronto every quarter for strategic coach and i'm doing this really really cool stuff living the life i've always wanted to do and i hated it and so i just I, that morning it was i remember it was like i don't know probably like may 15th something like that mid early mid-may and I said, I just can't do this anymore. And I just, mm. I said, I started pulling back. I said, I just want to feel good. You know, I just yeah. want to feel good. So about a year after that, I had that diagnosis. I started just taking space and time creating. I just started taking lots of three-day weekends. I bet, totally backed off a of business. I started handing business off to agents in our company. And I, you know, I went from $10 million a year, you know, which was back then it's kind of on a slower, prices are just starting to take off and um, probably down to somewhere around five, right? And so my, mm. it, it, it happened over some time, but I just started creating, I needed to rest. And so creating space and time. And then through that process of rest, I discovered that I was ADHD and I uh, got diagnosed um and then started and the adhd diagnosis was super cool and what what happened to is there's i listened to a gentleman his name is ned hallowell and he's written he's probably one of the world's foremost experts on add adhd and he spoke at a conference and the uh, name of his speech was the entrepreneurial mind and he was speaking to a group of high-level entrepreneurs and um basically saying the entrepreneurial mind is ADHD and a or ADD, ADHD. Mm. And so mm. it's like, wow. And there's genius in the ADD, ADHD. And I'm going, Oh my gosh, I'm not going insane. I am ADD. I've thought about it maybe for years, but, and it really has some negative effects when yeah, I had need to keep guardrails on to protect myself, but then also there's superpowers inside of it as well. And so, um, so I'm very conscious and it's taken, um, some time for me and I think mm -hmm. it's a process. It's not like you just flip the switch and you get there, but about playing into your unique ability or, or all your positive attributes and stay away from the stuff that can really get you in trouble. And so yeah. it was just like somebody gave me permission to go uncork myself and go be myself. And so anyhow, it's, it's been a great journey and it's been a huge transformation and I'm not out of it yet, but mm -hmm. I'm, I finally feel right. like for the first time that well, I don't know right now, but in the last year, year and a half, and especially in the last two, three weeks, I feel like, okay, I'm starting to get, have a better track and vision for what I want to do for the next 30 years. Good, yeah. good. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. So, it's a process, man. Yeah. And so the reason I share that was because, okay, I'm ADHD, right? And it's fine. Mm -hmm. And I, if I, if I would have known this years ago, I could have made some of these shifts more, uh, maybe more strategically than I did later. But I started sharing right. this inside our company and just kind of casually at first. And people started coming up to me, our agents, and she, they go, hey, Badger, I'm ADD too, you know, I, or I, and I'm going like, oh my gosh, all these people are ADD. So I started going down our roster mm -hmm. of the people that came to me 
And then I started saying, well, I know Betty Lou's ADD and John's ADD or whatever, right? And I'm, and I'm going, okay, 17 out of 41 agents were ADD. And the majority of our top producers are ADD. And I'm going, that's not unique to our company. This is everywhere, it, all the yeah. lots of real estate right. companies. So that's really what made me want to take it to the Michigan Realtors Convention, shed some light on it to the industry that, hey, a bunch of you knuckleheads out there, ADD, ADHD, um, talk to some people, get some help and embrace it and protect yourself because there's, there's some really beautiful things with ADHD, but then you're more highly addictive to it uh, or highly prone to addiction. Um, mm. there's, you know, and it's, and I can just see it in the halls of our company, you know, and, and it's, um, and these are some really fabulous, cool people, but also they just need to be aware and life will get a lot richer when you, uh, can turn the volume down on some of the negative things and turn the volume up on the positive things. Yeah. Yeah. Cancel out the noise, cancel out the distractions. Yeah. A lot of distractions, which is, which is hard. Oh, it's very yeah. hard in today's society. And, very hard, yeah. You know, and it's a really start under scheduling your life because we're all over schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, even the oh, most. Oh, yeah, talk about it. Yeah, if you got family, <laughs> you know. It, 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 yeah. We, I watch some of our young agents with young kids right now. And, and I we were crazy when we were young too, but it, I think it's more demanding now just with social media. and um, People are trying to live everybody else's lives except their own. You know, I don't want to say except mm -hmm. their own. And their own too, you know. Yeah. And in a world of convenience too, where everything is just microwave and super easy. Yeah, and yeah. Like we said, just so many different yeah. distractions on top of that. It kind of distracts you from your main goals and it doesn't, it doesn't make anything any better. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you are already dealing with that mm -hmm. mentally ADD, ADHD, and then, you know, you have the, all these different, you know, distractions on top of that. It's a lot of noise. It, it just makes everything cloudy. Yeah. So, I mean, you you give a lot of credit to the agents like yourself who find ways to deal with it oh, yeah. and still find a way to be successful in their profession. So yeah. I, I think it's great that you, you actually took the courage and were vulnerable enough to stand in front of uh, a, a class or a venue of your peers and actually express that, man. So uh, yeah, kudos you. to you first and foremost. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I've subsequently been yeah. asked to speak at a couple of different companies, you know, companies and board of realtors and, and share, and it's been great. And, mm -hmm. um, but it's just something I think if people want to talk, call me up or whatever, but just don't be afraid of it. It's don't, it's nothing to, it isn't anything to be ashamed of. And actually, if it, you go a little deep on it, a lot of our real genius is because of that. Yes. Yes, I agree. So. I agree. Yeah. And, and to the out, outside average person, it may may seem super unconventional and mm -hmm. just, you know, weird. But, you know, the way your brain operates, it, it just does it different. But it does yeah. it to give you that advantage in some type of way. Right. But yeah. you also use it to relate like we just talked about with not only your professionals, but I would imagine that you use that topic to relate to some of your clients. Has there been a situation where you were vulnerable enough to kind of express your 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 lifestyle with ADHD with the client and kind of have some common ground by any chance? Oh yeah, and I've had clients come up to me, and um, actually one of my clients is off the charts ADD, and it's a lady in town, oh, wow. and she's she's super cool about it, and you know I've worked with her on and off through the years, and so when I found out that I might be, I called her up. And I said, hey, we need to talk. <laughs> you know? And she kind of held yeah. my hand through it. She made me pinky swear that I'd go and get tested. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what am I getting into, you know? But I needed her support just really to give me permission to take that next step. And it was a really good thing. And um, and it's, it, you know, I'm not like, it, and it takes some courage, you know? I, I, yeah. Yes. The most difficult thing I see with, well, with myself and I, I, and our agents is having the courage to face ourselves because lots mm -hmm. of times we don't like what we see. And um, it's like, okay, I need to face this so I can move forward. And uh, whether it's ADD, ADHD, or whatever the issue might be. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how we can, Oh, I don't want to say how, how we can avoid uh, 
having uh, honest conversations with ourselves. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And I'm equally, 100%. Hey, I'm better than a lot of people, but I'm still pretty bad. You know, <laughs> I get and, it. Yeah. And, no, we're all human. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. and one of the things Kevin, we do in our company is every year we have mm-hmm. reviews with each agent and we sit down for about 45 minutes to an hour with everybody, the, the, our administrative staff and, um, our agents as well. And it's not like, Hey, did you hit your goals? All that kind of stuff. It's more like, Hey, what can we do to better help you? Right. And, and just an honest conversation. What are you thinking about for next year? And it, it's just really a debrief. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned in real estate is watching. I've been doing this since 2002 or three. So sitting with 40 plus agents or people every year, mm-hmm. a lot of the same people come through. We have very low turnover and it's people, agents, and it's not just agents, it's human beings. Um, and my, and it's myself, our inability to change. And even in areas where we know we really want to change and we still don't have the honest conversations with ourselves around, yeah, around man. that change. And yeah, and, and until we're ready and then, you know, I'm really big on the word right now, willing, you have to be willing you know, to do it. And, and that is, Good point. it's a level of courage that mm-hmm. sometimes we have it and sometimes we don't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Well said too, because you never know who you can help, man. When you're, when you're talking about that, you know, you never know who you can reach. You never know how you'll, you'll affect someone's life. So once you get over that fear, that's what it is. It's a fear that you're putting on yourself mm-hmm. to go out there and express what you're going through. You'd be surprised how, you know, the outreach that you'll get, the support mm-hmm. that you'll get, and, you know, how you can make, make common ground with clients that you are serving or just people that you're yeah. serving also. It just builds that rapport with each other, man. So you, yeah. you can't do anything but respect it. Yeah, and I think that the... As we get more and more distracted, I think the agents that are more and more connected to their hearts and their souls and are more connected with their clients are going to be the ones uh-huh. that thrive because all the information is getting commoditized. The leads are getting commoditized, everything. And so the thing that they will never commoditize is our connection with our clients. And Correct. so, and but everybody's looking for the next social media post to get a million leads. And mm. instead of like, hey, go have a beer with your customer or a cup of coffee or something, right. you know? Yeah, that human, yeah, that human interaction. Yeah, heaven, for, heaven forbid you should have some connection with them, you know? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you know. That's, so, that's so old school. Yeah, yeah. E- even <laughs> the even the other agents, you know? <laughs> right. So, no, real talk. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. I, I know that, I know that that you know, dealing with ADHD comes with, like we talked about before, a different, like the way that you think in general, Mm -hmm. is just different. Mm -hmm. But since, since it's such an unconventional way of thinking, I guess you could say, or a way that you process things in your brain, do you feel like that kind of gives you or gave you an advantage by any chance with the way you thought of a transaction or how to solve problems at any time of your career? Yeah, I mean, for for sure, I think that there's been advantages to it at times because I'm hugely creative. So for me, I can connect random, disparate facts, and um, and connect really, really well. Um, okay. But I also procrastinate to no end, right? And so, and how ADHD manifests in me might be a lot different than how ADHD manifests in my teammate down the hallway or the agent across mm-hmm. town, and so. It's mine's unique to me, and I have a friend and strategic coach, uh, Andre Brisson, has a podcast called uh, The Impulsive Thinker, and Andre's total opposite than me. He is totally opposite, but he is so aided. He's an engineer, super linear, super detailed, and I am not that, right? But (laughs) he's ADD, and our ADHDs are kind of similar, but his takes them uh, in different areas he's he can almost be a little ocd in some areas and then totally absent mind in different areas but andre's the reason i share that is andre's version of adhd has similarities but totally manifests itself in a different way than mine would and so um 
there's some common threads that go through a lot of this stuff, but you really have to become a student of yourself and learn about some of the common threads and then also, hey, this is how I rock and roll, and it, but mine's different than Andre's and it's not right or wrong, it just is, and accept it and then, okay, how can I lean into this crazy good stuff that I got? Right. Yeah. 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 No, that's interesting. Yeah. No, that's that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I will say the least. Yeah. You you did a feature on a podcast and said something that that I really want to get into. Uh oh. Don't give your power away. Mm-hmm. Now I I believe I have a grasp on what this concept is about, but I would love for you to take this opportunity to to talk about what that means first and foremost, and how you incorporate this either in your daily life or just your profession and dealing with a, 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 a transaction of some sort. I think what I was thinking about, I mean, it can you can apply it to a lot of different things, but uh, the biggest thing I might have been, and I can't remember exactly, Kevin, where that was, but. Um, mm-hmm. I look at it, our agents right now, and I don't know if it's as bad right now as it was last fall, but with the political environment going on, the economic environment right. going on, um, all you know, the lawsuits with National Association of Realtors and mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. commission lawsuits, all the negative wins that in the real estate industry and in life in general that human beings are facing right now, that Mm -hmm. the agents are just sitting on their hands and it's like this woe is me mentality. And so they're not doing anything. I I don't say they're not, but that's the impression we're getting. We're really worried about their mindset because they're giving their power away to things they have absolutely no control over. Okay. So I can guarantee you that next week the news is going to be crappy, right? Yeah. There's (laughs) There's going to be a few more lawsuits or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's yeah. going to be lots of stuff. It's going. I can guarantee mm-hmm. this year, the political environment is just not going to be fun, right? So how can we take our power back? And this is all stuff. It's like you can't control it. You have no control, and so you're giving all your power away to these things out there. That, and then there's going to be people that are going to be kicking butt and having excellent years. So yeah. how can we take our power back in the in the face of all these woods and it's controlling our mind and our mindset and then our actions and hanging out with positive people, turning the news off. And what am I doing today? That's revenue producing, Mm -hmm. you know? So how, how can I take my career and move it forward and take and not wait for the company to give me a lead versus how can I connect and what can I give to my clients? What can I give? Okay. You know, you can give time, you can give attention, you can give focus, you can give concern. I mean, pick up the phone, go say hi. I mean, there's so many things that you can do, but people just, and and get your body in action in that regard. And uh, take your power back. And that's just one way. It's how we think. You know? Yeah. You know, I love that. No, please, please. Well, you know, your, your teammate down the hall had a bad day and they just dumped on you, which absolutely happens. I've been, <laughs> I've been the uh, dumpy and the dumper. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and then, so then my whole day's ruined. Well, it's like, okay, how do I structure my day where I unfold it to my day with more, with better feelings mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. a spot where I can give versus where mm-hmm. I'm going to get the lifeblood sucked out of me? Right. It's like the death it happens. It's, man. Yeah, it's like the Death Eaters come and just, you know, yeah. <laughs> suck everything out. It's like, oh man, I was having a good day until about ten thirty, you know. But you, know. Yeah, you just got to find your ways through. You got to find it, find that inspiration. But exactly what I took from that, what you explained is pretty much exactly what I took from that same thing when I heard it. It's you know how they say life is ten percent what happens to you and ninety percent how you react to it is basically worry about the things mm-hmm. that you can control. Right. You know, don't worry about you know the factors that out that are outside of your powers. You know, worry about literally what you can control, your actual powers, mm-hmm. and then you act on that. Don't sit around and wait for that opportunity or right. whatever the case may be. However, it applies. You right. go out there and you and you use your abilities, your knowledge, your skills to actually, you know, work towards your goals and make things happen. Now, right. I, I I love the fact that you express that and put it in that in that in that form too. Don't what did you say? Don't give your power away. I love the way that you put that. Yeah, and I I've, I've heard it somewhere. I was, you know, kind of a halfway common phrase, but it's um I think it's true and and we all do it, you know. It's but just be aware and then mm-hmm. hey, work on it and get better and someday you Maybe I'll be enlightened. <laughs> you know, 
and I'll always be feeling 100% great every day. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So since you have to, you know, in the years that you've been licensed and, and you've had your career, like we talked about the ebbs and flows of the whole business and how it affects you, the success and the failures. You have any moments that you can reflect on where maybe a setback that you faced at the time where it seemed like a setback ended up turning to be a very valuable lesson. You know, um, I mean, there's been countless, right? And you've heard the saying, you know, you, you really don't learn much from your successes. You learn from your failures. Mm -hmm. And I tell mm -hmm. a lot of the people that are newer to the company and, and I, I say this and I say like, often, Hey, I've screwed up more than anybody in the company. You know, I think if there's one superpower that I have is I just keep moving forward. And, um, I, I, I think, um, I think we're okay. And lots of times for me, it's giving agents, it's giving myself and it's giving other agents just permission to be yourself and you're okay. Because we're trying to be this perfect agent and um, it's just be a, just be the best person you can be and the agency agent stuff will take care of itself. You know, mm. real, real estate's, you know, real Dr. Fred, you say real estate funds life. Real estate is not your life. And when you are all whacked up, usually you get those out of, you get those reversed. And yeah. we take, take, we start taking ourselves way too seriously. And, you know, nobody mm -hmm. gets, nobody really gives a shit. No, that's a fact. <laughs> and, and, and the grand scheme of things, that's the, that's the honest truth. Yeah. That's the honest truth. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what? It's important to learn from your failures, like mm -hmm. we just said. That way, you, you and learn from the mistakes of others. Also, first yeah. and foremost, those are those are key things. But yeah. you you dust yourself off. You you continue to try again, and you yeah. know you just like we just like we were continuously talking about. Just block out the failures. That was, I mean, block out the distractions. Excuse me. That was very very inspiring too, to kind of end things. But I want you to kind of reach into your bag and see if you can inspire us with a movie, a book. <laughs> quote, or even philosophy that you live yeah. by or that you have consumed in your lifetime to help mm -hmm. shape you personally and or professionally? You know, I've had so many great teachers, mentors from, you know, family members to, uh, uh, to business partners here. And, you know, our company has this quote, it's from Jim Aaron, Dick Reinhardt. I'm going to share two things. One, and our our saying for the company is real estate's a people business and our strength is our people. And that's inside the mm -hmm. company and outside the company. Yeah. But the most profound piece probably, and, and I could give you like dozens, but back in my, I don't know if it's my peak, but I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to survive life and going a hundred miles an hour. And Dick Reinhardt mm -hmm. and I were passing each other on the sidewalk. We have two buildings and we have a little walkway between the two and we're crossing out there and we're just chit chatting. And I was stressed out and he just looks at me and he goes, Badger, waste five minutes with your clients. And I go, Oh, because back then I'm trying to see how many face-to-face -face appointments I can have in a week. I'm, who knows what, I, you know, two kids active in sports, you know, all mm -hmm. the stuff going on in my life. And I, of course I'm a lot busier than I needed to be. And I was frantic and I was ADD and didn't know it. And, um, and I took it to waste five minutes. And for him, for me at the time, I was so worried about wasting time. Right. And it was like, Oh, I need to invest five minutes with my clients. So when I'm ready to like close that appointment out an extra five minutes and just hang out with them, listen to them. And then it went from there to my wife, my kids. And then it went from there to myself. And then mm. um, that was probably some of the best advice I've ever gotten in real estate when I was trying to be a high That's producer. That's real, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really for me, it's all about myself, right? So mm -hmm. it all came back to me. And when I started treating myself and it goes back to really, uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, 
impeccable self-care. So that's like mm. giving myself five minutes to breathe, you know, or what, you know, just to think or whatever, to go for a walk. And then I could, then I could better give it to my wife and my kids and my customers. And so yeah. I still think of that all the time, but it's a super simple piece, but it's profound. I love that, man. Yeah. Cause it, to me, it's, you can't pour from an empty cup. And yeah. I love that saying. Yeah. You have to have something in yourself in order to give to others. Mm -hmm. And it also just says to me, it's okay to be selfish at times. Yeah. It's yeah. okay to be selfish. Yeah, yeah. Get things that you want, that you deserve, that's going to make you happy, that's going to fulfill you and your passions, your dreams. Yeah. And then try to, you know, you can branch and give that energy off to others. It, it's contagious. Yeah, Kevin, sacred selfishness. Man, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, well said. Yeah, and it's it's hard. Perfect. It's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It it's a challenge, but yeah. you we find ways to deal with it. We find different people that we can find that can support us. Also, like we discussed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and those are, and those are key things. And we find professionals also that we can relate to, and that really can help us in this whole entire process too. Yeah, 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 for sure. And it, you yeah. know, like they say, right, it takes a village. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely and the village starts Perfect right place. the village starts sitting on our chair you know <laughs> yeah yep yeah. yep well said man and perfect place to land a plane badger man thank you so much for pulling up a chair to the closing table i appreciate that if you have any last words or want to tell people how to reach out to you the floor is yours no kevin thanks so much i really appreciate you guys reaching out so i, I do appreciate that uh i'm with air reinhardt realtors you guys up in midland michigan if you need anything just call shoot me an email and uh, I'm easy to find. Just look up Badger Realtor up here, man. And or BadgerBL.com has a lot of ADD resources on it. So if you want to go surf around in there, uh, check it out. But um, happy to talk to anybody. Nice. Great resources, man. Pre appreciate that again, Badger. And for our audience watching right now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, do us both a favor. Hit the like button, please, and thank you. Make sure you also hit the subscribe button and share the content. And if you are listening on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcast platform, please do the same. Give us a like, a five-star rating, and subscribe for our latest content. Badger, I always like to leave our audience with a question on the way out just to get them thinking. So this is for the audience. As an agent... What was a moment or describe a moment where you were vulnerable with your clients and you helped and it helped build your rapport? Don't tell us now, though. Leave it in the comments below. Besides that, I'll talk to you next time.